Today I'm sharing the kinds of books we read aloud in our classical Charlotte Mason style homeschool. Hi ladies, it's Raquel here. Welcome to Women Living Torah. Previously, I shared with you my homeschool and the life, and you got to see how our family spends just one hour a day doing our core subjects that are required in our state, math, grammar, that kind of thing. But a big part of my children's education is from the books that we read that cover so many different subjects from literature to geography to nature study to science to history to good character and good citizenship. There are a plethora of books that are filled with wholesome values and knowledge presented in such a desirable, appetizing way that I am excited to share with you today. Now, some of these books you've definitely heard of before, but I had to include them because they're well known for a reason. They're our favorites as well. But then there are some books that I'm hoping you've never heard of and perhaps you can consider them for your own homeschool and for your own family. I have a ton of books to go through here today, so I'm going to try to talk only briefly about each one. Let's get started with our literature read aloud. We will of course begin with The Little House on the Prairie series by Laura Ingalls Wilder. They're well known and well loved for good reason. They're just filled with wholesome life and good values and morals. I loved Farmer Boy. So far, we've read five of the books and that one has been hands down my favorite. So we really enjoy these series and I get great ideas for how I can actually become more sustainable, more prepared, more independent myself from these books. So highly recommend these for literature. The next book is one we haven't yet started, but it is upcoming for this summer and is The Merry Adventures of Robin Hood. We have read several abridged versions, but never the full complete work of it. So we are super excited, especially my son, to get into this book. I am kind of concerned that maybe the complete books are gonna have magic or sorcery or something like that in them. So let me know in the comments if you know, because I don't. So we're just gonna start reading it and find out. Um, but the abridged versions don't, and my children just love the adventure story and the good versus bad guy. We are really anticipating this read this summer. Next up, we have The World of Pooh. I had never read Pooh books. You know, this is completely different from Disney and it's not politically correct, okay? Because you've got guns in here and all kinds of stuff. But these are wonderful. These stories are so creative and imaginative and they're humorous. And the pictures are just precious. They are so darling, they're simple. But they just draw you in for some reason. So I'm reading this through with my children, all of us, including myself, are enjoying them. This is very, very different from Disney Pooh. So if you are like, uh, no Pooh, check out the actual Winnie the Pooh series. It's really lovely. Next, I'm going to share Anne of Green Gables. This was an abridged version that we read and I highly recommend this particular abridged version by Mary W. Cushing and D.C. Williams because the illustrations, you know, it's a pretty large book. So the illustrations really take up a lot of space and it just captures your fancy. They kind of alternate between colored pictures and then black and white pictures. And then as for the condensing and abridgment of the actual Anna Green Gables text, they take directly from Anna Green Gables and that's how they comprise the book. So it's the actual words of Anna Green Gables or Ellen Montgomery inside this book, but just some paragraphs and sentences and pages have been left out, of course, to make it shorter. It inspired me to go back and reread the Hannah Green Gables series, and so I've been doing that, and that's been really fun for me as well. But I loved this version of Anna Green Gables, and so did all of my children. They were just cracking up constantly about the different things that were happening with Anne. And finally, for literature, I have two picture books that I have to mention. The first one is The Oxcart Man by Don Donald Hall and pictures by Barbara Cooney. As you can tell, it is well loved. Oh my goodness. This is actually our second book of these to own because the first book we had was very well loved. And now the second one is getting well loved as well. It's essentially the story of a family and how they live a sustainable lifestyle through the different seasons and how they go from, you know, spinning their own linen and then the daughter's embroidering the linen and then it's being sold at the market. It's just a really beautiful picture of family working together through the seasons to live a sustainable and independent life. 
highly recommend the ox cart man and our second picture book i want to share with you for literature is the little house by virginia lee burton this is also our second copy because it's been very well loved in our house we read it all the time but it again goes back to kind of the seasons and what the little house is doing throughout the seasons then the city begins to grow up around her and she no longer has the country life and i guess one of the reasons why i love this book is because it does kind of romanticize the country life um, which I enjoy the country life so this book is really sweet really cute and kind of brings us back to wholesome values and what really matters so leaving literature let's move on to poetry there are just a couple of books I want to mention the first one doesn't have any pictures it's just ones that I read aloud to my children and they have memorized several as well it is poems that every child should know by Mary E. Burt Oh, there are so many poems in here that I just love. And I've never been a poetry person. It's not something that is really emphasized in public school, which is how I was schooled. But these poems are absolutely delightful. And sometimes they just, they speak to a specific situation, whether it is a season of the year, it's fall time, and they've got a beautiful poem describing fall that just captures it for you or situations with children about like children getting along, for example. I really enjoy reading poems out of this book. There are so many of them that I'm like, oh, I want my children to memorize that one and that one and that one and that one. So I definitely recommend this one for your home library. And the final poetry book I want to share with you is A Child's Garden of Verses. This version is written by Robert Louis Stevenson and illustrated by Tasha Tudor. The pictures are amazing in here. It, they are such high quality. You can just look at the pictures all day long. I enjoy just looking at the pictures, but then the poems, of course, are really creative and imaginative too. So we love looking and reading through these poems. We just read one or two every so often, but they really stick with you and kind of go a long ways. So love these poetry books. We've got some more books here. I hope you're as nerdy about books as I am because I'm loving sharing about these books. We're gonna talk about nature study, science, history, geography, that kind of thing next. So let's begin with a kids herb book for children of all ages by Leslie Tira. This is not actually a narrative book. It does have stories in it. However, I will warn you that many of them have fairies and magic and things like that in them. And we do not read the stories. Some of the songs as well, we do not read. But this is a plethora of information on different herbs, how you can use them, has recipes in here. And we love to just peruse this book, especially if we come across a new herb that we don't know much about. This is actually my first resource because it's just so accessible. It's so easy to understand. It's clear. It tells you how you can start using that thing right away. I love a kid's herb book. So even though we don't like sit down and read this aloud, we're constantly looking through this book. The next book for our nature study is the Burgess Bird Book for Children by Thornton W. Burgess. This is a pretty common book in Charlotte Mason circles. It's a narrative, but you learn different things about birds in the process. And although there are a few illustrations, there are some and they're very well done. It's really fascinating how you can take a narrative book and it gives you so much information and so much context for information that um, will stick with the kids and now they know what migration is and they understand why it's done, etc., etc. So definitely recommend these books. We don't read this like straight through. We're definitely taking our time reading it, but it's been a really good read. The next book for nature study is Parables from Nature. And I have heard others online say that this was really dry and hard to get through and they don't recommend it to others. I and my children love the parables from nature. Each parable is nature centered. So you're learning things about nature, whether it's the workings of a beehive or what have you. And you're also getting some type of moral, some type of bigger picture lesson for us. I have written down so many quotes from this book in my Book of Mottos notebook for me to read over and over again over time. It's so full of wisdom and also information and learning about different things in nature. As you can see, we're not very far into it because we're also taking our time going through this book, just reading it a little at a time. 
Some of the parables are somewhat long and they are written in a little bit older style of language. And so that can, I understand, be difficult for some people. So we, we take our time going through it, um, but my children seem to understand it just fine and it's beautiful. The lessons in this book are beautiful. Our next book for nature study and science is James Harriet's Treasury for Children. James Harriet was a veterinarian, and so he has written some of the stories of his adventures, visiting different farms and tending to their animals. So you've got cows and pigs and horses and that kind of thing. These stories are just really delightful. We just had baby sheep born, lambs born, and there's a story in here about a lamb and it getting lost. And so that was just so neat to be able to read that story just as we had lambs. And now my children are making connections between what they're reading and with our own lambs. I wouldn't say this book is as informative as far as the study of nature and science. Um, it really is more for the narrative and entertainment of everything. But as far as younger children goes, I think it's a really great way to discuss science and nature in a narrative form. It has some information in there. It's just perhaps not as purpose. These are more for entertainment, but they're really great stories. The pictures are beautiful. And I also enjoy that the vocabulary is not dumbed down. It's not too difficult to understand. It's not like the King James Version Bible or anything, but the vocabulary is going to be more like Beatrix Potter, for example, which we also love, but I didn't include because, you know, everyone includes Beatrix Potter books. But um, yeah, I love these books. It's really good. The last book I'm going to mention is Faces of the Moon by Bob Creelan, and this book goes through the different phases of the moon, which in our family is significant because we like to track the moon for the new moon when we're going to have the head of the month celebration. And this one, I really like how it just lays it out and it has each phase of the moon um, on a tab so that you can see how it changes throughout the course of the month. It also has information about when the particular phase of the moon is going to be rising and setting so you know when to look for it. So we really enjoyed this book. It's a good one and one that we revisit often because we are looking for the new moon every single month. The next books I'm going to recommend are by Holling C. Holling. He has several books. So far, we have only read Paddle to the Sea. Now, these books we use primarily for geography, but they also have a scientific element to them as well, and sometimes a historical element to them. And they are just really great stories. I also love that they're so large, and you've got the full page of pictures, and it just captures your attention. There's diagrams in there, and so much to look at. And, and then the stories are high quality, you wanna know what's gonna happen, and that kind of thing. So, so definitely recommend these for geography or science, or just for pleasure reading. And finally, we're looking at our history books. This is Abraham Lincoln by Ingrid and Edgar Parin de Valère. All of the books by this couple are really great so far that we've read. And I think we've read three or four of them. This is just one for example. But again, the pictures just really captivate you. They're large on the page, but then it tells the biography of this particular person in a narrative form. It's really interesting. A lot of the details are ones that perhaps you wouldn't have heard elsewhere. And so I really enjoyed these books and so do my kids. Like whenever I tell my kids, okay, go choose a book you want me to read, not for school, but just for pleasure, they're almost always going to choose one of these books and then we'll just read a chapter or so from it. We really enjoy the books by this couple. And a couple of other mentions here. I wouldn't say that these are as enjoyable as the Allaire books currently in our household with our younger um, ages, but David A. Adler and Jean Fritz have a lot of biographies and history type narratives that are also really good and informative and told in an interesting way. I also highly recommend books by Genevieve Foster, but these David A. Adler, he does a picture book of this person or that person, so those are great. And then Jean Fritz, will you sign here, John Hancock, she also has other ones, particularly I think about the American Revolution, but she might have others. So anyhow, both of these are great picture slash narratives that talk about history. 
All right, so my pile here is getting smaller and my pile on this other side is definitely getting larger. So we are nearly finished. The last two subjects I wanna talk about are Bible and character. And these are perhaps my favorites to read, although I love reading, well, especially literature, I love reading literature, but all of the books are just so good and wonderful, but um, Bible and character are, of course, fundamentals in our home. The first book I'll mention about Bible is, of course, the Bible, the actual Bible. I read it straight to my children. They memorize it straight from the scriptures. I usually read the King James Version, but sometimes I'll read from the New King James Version, or actually we'll listen to that on like an audio version. We have a dramatized New King James Version um, that's really good and just holds your attention. It has all these sound effects and different voices for the different people. We love that. That's New King James Version. And then we also sometimes read in the WEB and sometimes memorize in the WEB. So we read straight from the Bible and we memorize straight from the Bible and I think that is critical but I do also use a children's Bible occasionally. We just use this more for like if they want me to read a story from it I'll read a story from it. I don't do like any devotionals or anything like that but I like the JPS Illustrated Children's Bible. This is unfortunately only the Tanakh, only the Old Testament um, because it is a Jewish Bible but it includes a lot of stories that are not included in most children's Bibles. I mean, some of them that are kind of graphic, like Yael or JL, who puts the tit peg through the man's head. It has lots of stories that aren't normally included, so I like that. It also reads very much like a Bible, so like a New King James Version, maybe, or a W.E.B. Version. And it includes things that our children are familiar with, like the Mika Mocha, the Ten Words, that kind of thing. And also, it, it sometimes includes the Hebrew where it's relevant. For example, her name was Hava because she was the mother of all living, Chaim. And so I really like that it includes that. I was kind of disappointed by the illustrations, but my children seem to like them just fine. So that's great with me. <laughs> I also want to mention here Torah observant type books that maybe they're not Bible, but they're Torah observant where our children get to see other people living like them. The first I'll mention is by Janelle Torgerson. She has a couple of books from what I understand. She sent us Tiger the Sabbath Kitty and it's the story of a family that is preparing for Shabbat and the cat meows and reminds them to do this or that for Shabbat. And my children have had me read it to them over and over again, so I know they're enjoying it. But she, Janelle Torgerson, is a tour keeper just like we are. And so it's just really fun to have our faith being represented in the world of children's literature. And the other book I want to mention is Jewish. And that is All of a Kind Family by Sydney Taylor. I don't have the physical copy with me. It's already packed away. We've been listening to it on YouTube as an audio version. I and my children love that story. Of course, the children are Jewish, so they're keeping Passover, they're keeping Sukkot, things like that. And it is different. It's a little different than how we do it. But it's still nice to see a similarity between what they're doing and what we're doing. And it's a really wholesome, beautiful story. I've gotten a lot of great parenting tips from that book. So definitely recommend All of a Kind Family by Sydney Taylor. All right, and character. So, Connoisseur Kids by Jennifer L. Scott. She has a YouTube channel, The Daily Connoisseur. I love her channel, and we really enjoyed this book. Now, this book is kind of, it's very instructive. It's not a narrative at all, but I read it to my kids, and then we practice it. So, for example, when we're doing um, the chapter on table manners, then we've got these different rules that she's given us. And so we're looking and we're watching each other and then Papa judges us at the end to see how we did with, you know, keeping our elbows on the table or asking for someone to pass something instead of just reaching across everyone's plates and across the table to get it. Um, this book is just very clear. It's very concise on what is good etiquette, what is good manners. And we've been able to implement it very easily. This is definitely for the parent, I would say. Um, to teach their children. It's not so much for the children to read themselves. Another one that I would read, but this is definitely all stories, is Everyday Graces, A Child's Book of Good Manners. But it's just taking different passages or chapters from books or poems that speak to a particular virtue or mannerism and 
using those to teach good manners. And then usually has like a little paragraph that kind of summarizes it all together um, that you can use to kind of spring the conversation with your own kids about this particular virtue. Really enjoy these books. But for a long time, I owned this book and I did not use it because it was just too mature for my children. And so instead, what I used was A Child's First Book of Virtues by Emily Hunter. We like these stories a lot and poems. I know there is another Child's First Book of Virtues, I forget who it's by, that is recommended in a lot of the Charlotte Mason circles, but I found that it also had a lot of like magic and sorcery in it, so we don't um, use that one. But we use A Child's First Book of Virtues by Emily Hunter. This is very, very kind of like toddlerish, but um, even my older one who's eight years old, if I'm gonna read from this book, she's gonna be right there to listen to it. And it just really lays out, you know, this is the virtue of cheerfulness. This is the virtue of being compassionate, you know, and it in story form or in poem form, explains what that is, why it's important, and then it kind of allows you to talk about it further as a family. Similar to that are the books by Joy Berry. This one is a children's book about being selfish by Joy Berry, and she has a whole list. Being a bad sport, being bossy, being bullied, being careless, being destructive, being forgetful, on and on and on. And they are kind of like a narrative um, of you know, following Kate and Katie and Sam, for example, and they're going to learn about being selfish and sharing, but also some really practical ways to handle being selfish and to think through how can I share or is this a situation where I shouldn't be sharing? So what should I do in those situations? I really enjoy the practicality of these books, but they're also in a narrative form and they've got these cartoonish type of pictures. So my children bring these types of books to me all the time to read just for pleasure but obviously they're teaching good manners too and finally for character i enjoy reading fairy tales and fables to my children which are written with the express purpose of giving a lesson grim's fairy tales were all about trying to scare children into doing what was right actually fables are obviously a lot easier for i think a torah observant family to be able to pick up because there's not usually any magic or sorcery the Lion and the Mouse by Jerry Pinkney is actually no words in it. It's just illustrations, but it gets the point across and it's a really beautiful version of The Lion and the Mouse. But with fairy tales, we're very careful about what we bring into our home. So I own very few fairy tales. Um, the Little Red Hen, Town Mouse, Country Mouse, those were actually all fairy tales and they give you a moral lesson and they're classics, they're great, we all love them. But then there are other fairy tales that I'm very particular with and I have to be careful before I bring it into my home because a lot of fairy tales will include magic in the form of good witches and bad witches and sorcery and that kind of thing and I'm not interested in bringing that into my home. However, if there is a fairy tale that is written without that, I'm perfectly fine bringing it into my home. So Rumpelstiltskin, for example, this is a version where the evil person is just called a little man. Um, he has a special ability, as happens in fairy tales and fables. You know, the little red hen, she can talk, she lives a life like a person. So this little man has special abilities, but he's not doing any type of sorcery. He's not called a sorcerer, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm perfectly fine with bringing this book into my home. You just have to be very careful if that's something that you're looking for it is fairy tales, but not with magic. I actually just bought a Puss in Boots by Jerry Pinkney because the illustrations were beautiful. And the only Puss in Boots versions I was ever familiar with was the version where, you know, the cat, of course, can talk and dresses in boots and in a feather hat. And then also the evil man is a giant. Well, this version by Jerry Pick Pickney that I just picked up has the evil man as a sorcerer. And so it's like, oh man, I didn't realize that Puss in Boots had that in it. So I'm gonna have to get rid of that book because I don't want it in our home. And I might find another Puss in Boots that doesn't have him as a sorcerer, he's just a giant. And so I feel comfortable bringing that into my home. You know, we all have to just be discerning with what we're bringing into our home and what I may accept, you may not. And what you accept, I may not. But you also don't need fairy tales to teach good morals and lessons to your children. There are lots of other books that do the job just fine as hopefully I've shown you. And I personally don't own very many fairy tales just because there's so few that I 
want in my home or I haven't found a version that I want in my home. So that's just something to be mindful of when it comes to fairy tales. So there you have it. Those are some books that we read aloud in our homeschool and just as part of our life as a family that loves to read. I hope you found some new ideas for your own home library and that you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you do and I would love to hear from you in the comments. What are some different titles and authors that you enjoy in your home? Share with us all in the comments below and until next time, I pray Yahweh will bless you and keep you. I'll talk with you later. Thank you.